What's up guys, David here today. I am gonna be working on uh, the Scion TC. I'm gonna be painting the lip that I showed in the last Scion episode. This is in uh, an eBay lip that's a replica of a Racing Solutions lip, a company that is no longer around, unfortunately. But this is a lip that I've wanted for a while, so I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of that now. And then we are gonna go ahead and get into the process of sanding it and uh, priming it using adhesion promoter and just going through all the steps of painting it and I've got some uh, color matched paint um, from a company called automotive touch-up and we'll be applying that and then a bit of clear coat and hopefully the end process turns out to be worth the labor because painting is uh, quite a bit of labor involved as probably you guys know so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you through the steps that we're gonna do to paint this thing There's probably gonna be varying advice out there on how to go about prepping this. Um, of course, the tried and true steps are gonna be, you know, scuffing it up with sandpaper and then applying primer and then maybe even wet sanding between the primer and the base coat, maybe even base coat and uh, clear coat. You know, you could probably refine this as much as you want. I'm not gonna take all the time in the world to do it. So I'm gonna start with a 220 grit and then go ahead and lay down the primer from there. And then after that, I'll probably hit the primer with a 400 grit uh, wet sand and then move on to laying that uh, that base coat. And then, you know, once that is uh, kind of cured, I'm gonna go ahead and throw on the clear coat. So you could really take a lot of time with this and, you know, probably get great results. I'm not gonna take all the time in the world. This isn't that expensive of a lip. And, um, you know, from results I've used in the past, I, I don't see too much difference in the finish work. And, you know, I'm doing rattle, a rattle can job, so it's not like uh, this is gonna be professional. Um, I'm hoping that it looks, you know, about the same color with this color match. I've had good results from previous uh, paints from Automotive Touch-Up. So we're gonna go ahead and get started sanding on that and then uh, we'll pick it up from there. guys so I just spent about an hour or so sanding up this front lip um, so what I'm gonna do now is instead of just taking a rag and some you know cleaner wax and degreaser or alcohol I'm actually just gonna hose it down first um, and get all the debris and dust off here it's been on the garage floor and it's got dust all over it uh, it'd be a whole lot easier than just you know taking a cloth to it um, but after that I will use some either alcohol or wax and degrease uh, wax and grease remover and then from there we'll go ahead and lay down the primer coat and then after that we will probably give it a while to cure and then we will wet sand that and then start laying on the base coat and then the layers of clear so let's go ahead and clean it up all right guys 
I went ahead and hosed everything off. So all the major dust and debris is off there. But what we want to go ahead and do now is, like I was saying, um, I'm going to grab some alcohol and clean this thing down. Just make sure that there's no grease. You know, your hands tend to have oils in them just naturally. Um, dirt, just kind of any foreign objects that we don't want to be trapped in the paint or not letting the paint adhere properly. So that is what I'm going to do now. And then you can see I've kind of got my little booth set up in here. It's just, uh, you know, a tarp and then some trash bags and stuff laid over some of the items here in the garage. Um, not that they're of value, but you know, <laughs> some of it, well, is, but um, you just don't want overspray going everywhere because it's gonna happen. You're gonna spray elsewhere. So just make sure and cover up any areas that you do not want to be sprayed down by paint. So that is what I'm gonna do now and let's see how it turns out. So this is what I use to clean my products before I clean, before I paint anything. It's a uh, denatured alcohol or denatured. I'll let you guys discuss that in the comments and fight about it. You shall be exterminated. Huzzah! I'm just going to go ahead and clean the parts with it. So this is what I like to use. I like to put this in a old uh, spray bottle, just an old like isopropyl alcohol bottle, and then just give everything a thorough clean down with this and a microfiber towel. And that's usually done with pretty good results. One thing especially that you guys want to make sure and do if you're painting is have a respirator not just a cloth mask that won't really do much for you other than block maybe some small particles but it's not going to block those harmful vapors that uh, you know can enter your system and make you just really feel ill or cause a brain damage so that's number one tip no brain damage we're already dumb enough for being into these cars and spending as much money as we do so Try not to lose any more brain cells. guys it is the second day here and the paint has dried up nicely so what I'm gonna do is flip it over real quick and give it a uh, primer coat on the back and then after that we're gonna let it dry for about 20 minutes or so and then we're gonna go ahead and wet sand and throw down those layers of base coat So guys, there's one thing that I didn't think about, and that was the fact that I'm using a black primer on this black polyurethane plastic, and it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to see where you've actually painted and if you've overlapped your lines or anything. Um, luckily, I mean, it's turning out really good and it looks like I've covered the whole area from what I can see, but I would definitely use 
not the same color primer as your actual material is. So in this case, I would probably use a light gray. That's usually what I end up using, but um, turned out fine in this instance, but if I had to redo it again, I would definitely use a gray paint. All right, guys, so that layer has dried on the inside. Um, one thing that I have to fess up to doing. I didn't do it. Is I completely forgot to use the adhesion promoter, which I have. And it's supposed to go directly onto the plastic, in this case, polyurethane. And it's gonna help that paint really adhere to that surface. Um, now, that doesn't mean the whole project is damned because of that. Um, I would have preferred to use it, but from what I can read and what I can find out, it looks like there's plenty of people that have painted polyurethane lips without that adhesion promoter. Um, now, I don't think they've run into problems, but I'm not sure. But that is something that I wish I had remembered to do. I, in my rush to film everything and get it all prepped, totally forgot about that. But the, uh, the good thing is this primer should hold up well still. Um, I believe polyurethane is a non-polar plastic, meaning that most of these paints um, are gonna stick well to that surface anyways. But just wish that I'd done that, so I wanted to share that. So what I'm gonna do now though, is I'm going to go ahead and actually just throw one more layer over the front of this thing. I've got it flipped over a different direction than I had it originally. Just wanna make sure and get a good surface on there and that's thick enough that uh, when I go to wet sand it, I'm not you know, getting right down to the bare plastic. So one more layer here and then we're gonna throw on that base coat. Right, guys as you can see I've got the other coat of primer on there so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the wet sanding portion of this I am uh, impressed with how my finish turned out considering I couldn't see super well with the lighting in here um, I've since added a light and uh, just in combo of that with the black primer on black plastic I'm uh, happy with the results so far doesn't seem to be any runs or any rough spots at all. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get into sanding it. I'll be using a 400 grit wet sanding paper. So I've gotta go get the water for that and then we'll go over this with the uh, 400 grit wet sand and then move on to our base coat. Okay guys, so camera battery died there, but I finished the wet sanding process and uh, camera's getting a little wacky with the autofocus here. I don't know what it's doing. It's really having some, some hard time focusing here, but anyways, finished the wet sanding process and uh, hosed it off. Got all the dust and uh, paint debris off there. So just gonna let it dry real quick and then we are gonna move on to cleaning that up with some alcohol or finitured alcohol fuel, if you will. And then we'll get into that base coat and the clear coat. A great success.
guys. So I have thrown on a fourth layer of clear coat here and it is now uh, about 10 p.m. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the garage and um, we'll come back and check this thing in the morning and see how our results look. But uh, I can say it's looking very nice. All right guys, it is the next morning and I just checked out the paint and I could not be happier with the results. I think this is probably the best at home paint job that I've done before. I mean, this thing just turned out absolutely beautiful. There's no runs in the paint. Um, the quality of the base coat, the primer, the clear coat all just turned out fantastic. So I wanna go ahead and show you guys the results. guys so what do you think I think it turned out awesome I just could not be happier with the, uh, the finish of it um, I was concerned that there was gonna be dust maybe in the uh, paint layers because I'm just working out of here in my garage and I've had uh, the door open on some of it granted I shut it on a one of the windier days um, but the temperature has been you know sub 60 you know so sometimes sub 50 and there's been I think 80% humidity so um, not ideal but it turned out great. Um, just take your time with this kind of thing. Prep is everything. You're always going to hear that. Of course, that is the case. So just make sure and take your time. Don't rush it. Patience is key here. Just take breaks between layers. You know, I, I would go inside and just watch YouTube for a little bit because <laughs> I guess I'm heavy into that. Um, but yeah, so with that being done, we're going to go ahead and throw this thing on the car. Right, guys this thing fits up actually amazingly it just snapped into place and it contours to the body lines really well so fitment is really awesome actually I couldn't recommend this enough um, it seems like a stable and what's the word <laughs> seems like a durable product really there's a very tiny lip on the bottom that has pre-drilled holes in it but the problem is it doesn't really extend underneath the actual existing OEM bumper so that's a bit of a problem because it, I think they you know give you a hardware kit with this thing I believe um, I don't know I don't remember if it's self tapping screws or if it's actual hardware I would imagine it's probably just self tappers um, that would uh, that is an issue though so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put 3M double sided tape where I can along the flatter sections of the bumper and then I'm also going to probably from the lips on each side that wrap around to the kind of the inner, inner fender section. I'm gonna probably either run a uh, bolt and a nut through there or I might just use self tappers. Um, I've actually, I've done that on the Z because there's really only like one place that that even has to really mount up. None of it really covers the bumper. So I've not had an issue with that and I've been on track, you know, at 120 miles an hour, no issue at all. Um, so I don't think it should be a problem, but we'll, uh, we'll figure that out here in a moment. I'm going to throw the uh, double-sided tape on first. Of course, I'm going to use the um, denatured alcohol in order to uh, clean this up before I put the tape on there.
Okay guys, I figured out the game plan. My last two brain cells did some work and uh, I've got these little uh, spring clips, I believe they're called. Um, that's why it's good to keep these, you know, old hardware in a, like an organized box or something. I found some uh, bolts with those U-clip or the spring clips. And what I'm gonna do is kind of heat this up and form it around here just so that double-sided tape grabs. And then I can um, drill some holes for these uh, clips and then this will sandwich the two together and then I'll run the bolt through and uh, that should hold it in place pretty well and then I might just run some self tappers in the bottom because you can't see those just right into the bottom of the bumper there for a little added security so I'm gonna start by heating it up here guys I am stoked about this fit and finish I mean that paintwork just turned out better than I could have imagined um, I mean I've done this job before like on my C and uh, it didn't turn out near this good um, and that's thanks to all the prep that went into this and just the time that I spent just uh, on the finer details of things and I think it looks wonderful I have always wanted this lip for this car this was on the list since day one of looking at mods on this thing, and I couldn't be happier with it. Let me know what you guys think about the fit and finish and the paint quality, and if you guys like the lip, and hopefully enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and then we hope you guys will subscribe and look out for the projects in the future. We definitely have a lot of fun stuff headed this way, so make sure and give this a like and a subscribe if you guys enjoyed. All right, peace.